Hello, my most amazing artists. This is week three of our crystal clusters project. On week one, we drew our crystal clusters using lines to create different shapes. Lastly, we used value or shading to um, create form in our shapes to make them a lot more three-dimensional. Now, this is actually the second to last step is to uh, create the background for our clusters here. And to do that, I am going to actually use an entirely new piece of paper just because I don't want to accidentally mess up all the hard work that I've done so far. And we are going to be using water today. So just in case I want to make my background on another piece of paper, just so I don't accidentally mess up my drawing. Okay, so I'm gonna set my drawing off to the side. And uh, we are actually going to be doing a version of painting today. Okay, and what you will need to do what I'm doing is some markers. And since I use mainly blues, purples, and greens for my crystal clusters, I'm going to use reds, yellows, and oranges for my background just to help them, my clusters stand out a little bit more. If I made my background the same colors that I used for my crystals, they might blend in a little bit too much. So I really wanna make my crystals stand out. So I'm gonna use opposite colors, okay? And I'm using markers. Um, if you have a paintbrush, you can use a paintbrush today. You will need a little cup of water. And going back to the paintbrush, if you don't have a paintbrush, you can actually do this technique with cotton balls as well, okay? So if you have cotton balls, you can use those. Otherwise, we are going to use a paintbrush. And if you don't have a paintbrush or cotton balls or markers, guys, you can just color a piece of paper using crayons or colored pencils, even Sharpies, highlighters, whatever you have, okay? Just color a piece of paper using opposite colors of what you did for your crystals so they stand out a lot, okay? So if you're going to do the technique I'm going to use today, you are just going to simply take your markers and also I have my piece of paper on top of what I call a messy mat. You can just put a scrap piece of paper under your work so that you don't get your table all messy with paint, okay? In, in this case, it's markers. But anyways, I am just going to simply color my entire piece of paper in all of my colors. Um, whenever you're coloring, you can switch out your colors whenever you want to. I think I'm just going to make mine kind of random, but you could do a pattern of like red, orange, yellow, red, orange, yellow, red, orange, yellow, or it could just be totally random like I'm going to do. Okay, that is totally up to you because guess what guys, you are the artist. And just as a reminder, Yours should not look exactly like mine because I'm a different artist than you. You are your own person. You are your own artist. So try to do what you think would be unique and what you want to do, okay? Don't just follow in my footsteps. Do the same steps that I'm doing, but do it in your own way, all right? That's a part of being creative and being original. All right, so I'm just going to color my whole page using markers, and then I will come right back to show you the next step. All right, guys, I have finished coloring my whole entire paper. I wanted to leave as little white space as possible, but it can be a little bit messy because when we add water to this, our colors should just start to blend together and you won't see as much of this streakiness going on, okay? So I'm gonna teach you how to do it with a paintbrush and how to do it with a cotton ball, whichever one you have. But remember, if you don't have either of these tools, then you can just color your paper with colored pencils or crayons, whatever you have, okay? So with the paintbrush, I'm just going to dip it in some water and you kind of want it to have a lot of, or a decent amount of water on it, okay? And I am just going to paint water carefully, not really messily or anything. I'm just gonna paint it over top of my marker. And this kind of turns into like a watercolor because markers or these kinds of markers are water-based markers. So when you put water on them, the color starts to bleed a little bit. This technique probably wouldn't really work with Sharpies or anything because those are permanent markers and water doesn't wash them away. But it works with water-based markers because normally if I got this on my table or something, I could just wipe it off with a little bit of water. So that's why our colors are beginning to blend together. And the more um, that this dries, the more the colors will start to blend, okay? But we need it to let it dry 100% okay before we do anything else to it so i did my top portion with the paintbrush okay and now i'm going to show you how to do it with a cotton ball it is basically the same except for with a cotton ball we don't want to kind of smear over our 
paper too much because we might accidentally rip a hole in it. So I'm just going to dip my cotton ball in some water and I'm actually just going to dab it onto the colors. And since the marker is getting wet still, it should still start to blend our colors together. All right. So I'm not pulling my cotton ball across the paper. I'm just stabbing it. And once it gets a little bit too dirty, you can just switch off to a new one, add some water, dab it on the paper. And as you can see, this orange right here, or this red actually, is starting to bleed into this yellow. And it looks really pretty in person. I know it's a little bit hard to see on the camera, but trust me, guys, when you do this, you are going to see all these beautiful colors start to blend together. And it might look even different if you decided to use different colors than me. All right, so after you put water, either using your paintbrush or these cotton balls, we need this to dry 100%. So this is all we're going to do today. Um, next week, it should be dry completely. And we are going to add our crystals onto our painting here. Okay, so I hope you guys have fun with this little uh, marker technique. Um, I think it's really awesome how markers can actually turn into paint when you add water to them. So that's why I wanted to show you guys, and we might actually be doing this a lot more in the future, okay? So I hope you guys have lots of fun, and I can't wait to see your creations. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.